We were talking last time about the coupon collection problem. We got started on this. It says that we have a collection of infinitely many balls in each of n colors. Here's an example with n equal three. And we're gonna draw the balls one at a time, and we're gonna stop as soon as we get all n colors. And we wanna know, on average, how many draws does that take? For this example that I did, it took me seven draws. And the way that we're gonna analyze this is we're gonna think of everything as either a success or a failure. This is a success in that I got a new color, and then a failure in that I got an existing color. A failure, and then a success, I got a new color, and then a failure, a failure, and finally a success. And we always end on a success, of course. Last time we figured out that the probability that I, I fail, given that I already have k colors in my collection, is exactly k over n. And that lets us know that the probability that I succeed, given k colors, is going to be 1 minus k over n. So what I can do is I can think about breaking up this trial into these regions where I stop after each success and I think about, okay, how likely is each one of these events here that I get one ball? Clearly, in the first case, I have zero colors. I know with 100% certainty that the next ball I draw will be new. But here, there was a certain probability associated to failing twice and then succeeding, and also here. So we're going to think about it by splitting it up into these ways, and that was one thing that we started on last time. We decided to look at the probability of S minus 1 failures and then 1 success and again, we still need to know that we have k colors already in our hand because it really does depend on that k. This was just k over n to the s minus 1, those are our failures, times k over n, oh, sorry, times 1 minus k over n, and that's our success. Okay? But now what we're going to do is we're going to use this analysis and we're going to talk about, okay, how do we figure out the average number of draws that it will take? Well, the average here is really about expectation in the mathematical sense as an expected value. The expected value. So the setup is similar to what we have before. We had A is going to be the set of possible outcomes. And we have X, which is a subset of A, is the events that we're considering. And the probability of capital X is equal to the number of things in X divided by the number of things in A. Another way that I could think about this is I could do a sum over everything in X of just the probability of X divided by um, the number of things in A. And in that sense, I'm averaging things out. What is different with the expectation is that we're also going to have a function V, which I think of a value function from A into the real numbers. So this is a value function. And this is going to happen when I want to know, on average, how many of what. So the value here is going to be the number of draws. So the event is going to be that I get all colors, and the value of that event is going to be how many draws did it take me. So the kind of expectation that I'm looking at here, the formula for the expectation, is E of X, instead of just being the probability, I'm going to weight each event by the probability that it happens times the value of it happening. And so again, our value function here for this application is going to be the number of draws. That's my value function. So let's see what kind of headway we can make with that. So if I'm going to think about it, I've made a lot of progress here where I'm sort of keeping in mind my colors. So I'm going to take this and let's just take the expectation for here. The expectation of the number of draws, that's my function, that's my V, the number of draws until one success given K colors. So that's what I want to know. What do I expect the number of draws to be? So the number of draws is going to be, um, well, we can think of this as just summing over S greater than or equal to 1. So here S, um, this is going to be my number of draws which is going to be one more than the number of times I fail. So that tells me that, okay, well, I already know I'm going to have k over n to the s minus 1. Those are the number of times that I fail because I'm going until I get one success. 
So here's my one success. And now the difference is that I'm now going to weight this by S, which is the value function that I have, the number of draws that it took me. So let's do some manipulation onto this. So we can distribute the, so we have a number times a difference, so we can distribute this in. That'll be handy. So we're gonna get the sum, S greater than or equal to one, uh, greater than or equal to one, we can re-index in a minute. S greater than or equal to one of K divided by N to the S minus one minus K divided by N to the S times S. Now I'm gonna re-index so that my indexing starts at zero. So this is gonna be the sum greater than S greater than or equal to zero. And this is gonna be K divided by N to the S times S plus one. I'm distributing my S through, and this is gonna be the sum. This one I'm not gonna re-index. Um, K divided by N to the S times S. I'm just gonna observe that when S equals zero, the first term dies. So this is actually the same as this from S equal one, okay? So here I re-indexed, but over here I didn't re-index. I just used the fact that, oh, the first term is zero. That's convenient. It's convenient because now I can see that I have a telescoping series. So this is gonna be equal to um, the terms are all going to telescope out. So this is the sum from S greater than or equal to zero of K divided by N raised to the S. This is a geometric series. I know how to evaluate that. It's just one, minus, one over one minus K over N. So that's fantastic. So I've actually figured out the expectation that I have the number of draws that I'm going to have, given that I have K colors, is going to be one over one minus K over N. Okay, that's great. It depends on K, of course. It depends on how many colors I have. And let's just do a sanity check. If I have zero colors, I get one over one, which says that the expected number of draws until I succeed is one. Yes, of course, because if I have no colors, I have no balls, then I'm going to draw one, I'm going to have one, and it'll be a new color. Okay, but now we can actually solve the problem we set out to solve, which is our main expectation. So the expectation of the number of draws until I get a full set. So until we get all colors. What is this? So this is going to be, again, I'm gonna think about here, how many of these bracket events do I have? So this expectation here is just one of these bracket events. Given that I already have this many successes, I know how many draws I'm gonna have until my next success. So how many brackets do I have? Well, every bracket ends at a new color. So I'm just gonna have N of these. So I'm gonna let K be that parameter. So I'm gonna let K go from zero to N minus one. So K, the interpretation of K is the same as before, equals the number of different colors in my hand. And keep in mind that the expectation is gonna go until you get a new color. So I stop at N minus one, because once I have N minus one, I go until my next success, and now I've got a full set. I start with no balls, which means that I have no colors in my hand. Okay, and now I need to put in the expectation, well, it's exactly this one. The expectation that I draw until I get a success, given that I already have K colors, because now K is my parameter. So this makes sense to do. And this is great, I've actually just figured out what this is, so this means I get the sum from K equals zero to N minus one of one over one minus K over N. And then we can rationalize that denominator and flip things around, so this is gonna be the sum from K equals zero to N minus one of N times one over N minus K. And now I can just do a little manipulation here. I'm just gonna re-index everything um, by changing K to N minus K. And this is gonna be N, I can pull that out of the summation, the sum from K equals one to N of one over K, which I can say, now we can do an asymptotic analysis. This is N times this summation here is basically log N. So I can tell you how many I expect to get is about n log n. And let's just make this really explicit. So when I'm looking at three colors, so three colors available, what I'm gonna get is the exact formula is gonna be three times one plus a half plus a third, which if you work it out is just five and a half. And if I take three log three, I'm gonna get that that's equal to 3.3. So my 
estimate here is going to be underestimating because log is going to be below this, but it's a pretty good estimate. And if I take it out to 100 things, then I'm going to say, well, my exact formula is going to be for 100 colors is going to be about 520, and my estimate's about 460. So it's, it's not a bad estimate, but we often want to get these sort of asymptotic estimates when we're doing this problem, but we, of course, have an explicit formula that we could compute.